Coles, then. He's been in All Blacks since 2012. This is his 11th year in the team, 82 tests. Welcome back to the show, Dane, and back on the bench. How does that feel, mate? Yeah, it's good, mate. Good to be um, back in the mix and, um, yeah, get a run. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. So, essentially the same All Black side, the run on 15 the same. There's been some changes to the bench. Was that what you expected? Uh, oh, I'm never quite sure <laughs> with the coaches, like with the impact. But, yeah, I think like, I feel like the starters, especially the full pack of... Um, especially the front row boys that put on a good shift, so they probably definitely deserve their chance again. And, um, yeah, it's just the um, nature of the game. And Fozzie gave me the chance, so, yeah, I'll leave it up to the coaches. Yeah, well, the selectors with All Black Rugby, uh, you know, err on the side of caution normally. I mean, it's you know, even if people expect wholesale changes, it never really happens, does it? No, nah, I think big changes, especially probably the situation um, we find ourselves in, is probably... Not the greatest thing, so um, yeah, the consistency in the 15 has been good and um, for you guys getting the run on the impact, we've been working hard behind the scenes, it's been quite good as well. That front row, yeah, really well performed in the first test, you know, coming off after 50 minutes or whatever though, are you surprised at that? I mean, I can hardly imagine you putting your hand up and saying, <laughs> I want to, oh, you know, I want to come off coach. <laughs> oh yeah, but you love the buddy, keep going, but you just got to have trust in close Fozzie and, and, and Jace Ryan to, to make that call but yeah I'm sure those big boys would were always keen to keep going but um, mate, you just, you, it's like your teacher you just get told and you get off and, and support the team Dane Coles with us All Blacks announced today and of course playing Argentina so just you know, in your, in your own mind your own thoughts and that I know that you hate losing more than everyone else and every fan that sits here and thinks that you guys don't hurt I know that you hurt bigger than everyone because you're wearing the jersey for a start how does it how much does it stink mate when you lose a match yeah mate it does um, I suppose especially this year with the I suppose the, this team hasn't really been in that kind of um, situation so I think there's always a process mate like the Saturday Sunday always a write off because you're you're feeling it, and then once you kind of um, have your review and have your meetings, you find solutions and processes to try to fix the result. So I suppose that's always a bit, I suppose, therapeutic. Um, that way you can kind of get off it, and it always probably creates a bit of extra edge and um, motivation to to fix it. So yeah, but also staying together, mate. I think that's the biggest one. That's um, don't go rogue and don't go by yourself or trying to. Get the result as a team and get solutions to be better. That's um, that's what we're trying to do. How you know how 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 much conversation do you have amongst each other after a loss? Do you, do you actually sit down and talk about it a lot, or is it more that you you, you know you just know that you just got to get on with it? Oh yeah, there's been a few conversations made as as, as players. Um, yeah, trying to. <laughs> trying to fix things and trying to just have a yarn about things and trying to make things better and um, can we do this, can we do that? But yeah, I suppose, I think if you bottle it in, um, you might explode. So I think connecting with the lads um, is always good and sitting down for a, for a beer or something after the game and just trying to, I suppose, take your mind off it for a little bit. But um, yeah, there's always conversations going around of um, what's happening and how, how can we you know, turn this around. I mean, it must be also a weird position for you to be in because you've gone through a, an era of all-black rugby where we were just nigh on unbeatable, mate. I mean, you know, I, 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 this is as stupid as it is, Dane. I remember taking calls on Talkback where people were saying, oh, it's boring, the all-blacks winning all the time. I mean, what the... <laughs> you know? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I'll be pretty keen for that to, <laughs> to come back. <laughs> mate, yeah. Get those callers back. Oh, yeah, yeah like, mate, I've, obviously I was pretty lucky enough to... Um, be some of those special teams, but um, you know, mate, we can't change what's happened. You know, like we, 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 like you said before, we hurt more than anyone, and I know we're working hard as a group to to turn this around. And as much as it sucks, mate, we're, we're trying to, you know, we just got to knuckle down, um, keep tight, and and just get the result that we need. It's, it's as simple as that. Are you really now intensely focused on just this particular game? I had uh, Marshy on, I had Max on this week, mate, and those guys, obviously, you know, part of an All Black history and legacy, and I don't need to remind you about this, where history is established and you have these fantastic records and then we lose those records. And both of those guys said, bugger the World Cup, not interested in the World Cup. Let's start winning today. Let's win this next match. Is that where your, where your head's at? Yeah, that's my mindset. I know that's a lot of the guys in there. Um, 
and our team's mindset is it's, it's all about Argentina and Hamilton this week, mate. It's, we can't worry about next year or the blitters low or stuff like that. It's um, yeah, we've got to keep our feet on the ground because I think if we look too far ahead, we'll trip ourselves up, and yeah, it'll be um, we'll take it take the eye off the ball, that's for sure. And that frustration after going to Joburg and, and pulling that out, you know, I mean, I think that's what really shocked everyone last week with losing to Argentina. It was kind of like, right, we're right. But, you know, what is what is the state of international rugby at the moment? I mean, you've been around a hell of a long time. Have we slipped back a bit? Have the other teams caught up a bit? Is it a bit of both? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's probably a bit of both. Um, but the, the, I think regardless of what's going on the other games, like, we put a lot of work in. That was probably the frustrating part. Like we put so much effort into getting that win in Johannesburg, and then we just took like a step back with the losing the result in the weekend. And like we were in control for long periods of that game. Yeah, That's just yeah. How we lost it, which was the, which, which was the frustrating part. So yeah, we've taken those um, learnings on board, and like I said, we just got to knuckle down this week and, and make sure we. If we're dominating the game in long periods of time, we've just got to do it for longer. And we can't give these guys a sniff like we did in the weekend. Because, yeah, sure, they made a lot of tackles and sure, they didn't miss a lot of tackles. But we we looked a bit kind of the samey, if you know, like the one off running in that just wasn't kind of yeah. working. Have you talked about that this week? Yeah, I think, like, yeah, you're right. Like, especially in that last 20, we just try to um, dominate clean. We got quite narrow. So we, there's, there's obviously a lot of space on that field. So maybe. Talk about maybe you know a few kicking options or stuff like that, just to uh, use the space a bit more and not let our forwards just run into a brick wall. Especially when they got their tails on, mate. They're pretty passionate and just teeing off us on our one-off runners, so that just kind of closed our game down. So yeah, I think it's been a bit more smarter in the way we play the game, especially in those closing stages. Where are our line breakers? I mean, that's one thing that yeah, it's really frustrating at the moment. You know, guys one on one smashing through or beating a guy, and we've had them in the past. We've had Ma, and I mean, we had the Beast Jerome and stuff like that. Do we have those players at the moment, or is it just a transition phase? We've got to find them. I think they're there, mate. We're just not probably giving those guys the chances. Um, I think you've seen in like probably Africa, like the guys like Will Jordans, and that made some really good line breaks, Caden Clark. So we just we've got to put those guys in situations where they can be get one on one with players or into space, um, yeah, and give them the ball and give them the time that they deserve, and hopefully they can open them up. Um, yeah, but I think as a collective we need to be a lot better in, in controlling that and giving those guys chances to do that. You know, I mean, look, it's just, it's easy, always easy, isn't it? And I mean, you hear it and hear it, to sit back and to criticise and, you know, everything like that. But I, I mean, ultimately, we all want the same bloody thing, don't we? We just want, we want a good all-black side playing well, winning test matches. Yeah, I understand. We want the same thing, mate. And I know it might, people might not think that, but we're, we're doing everything we can to turn this around and just trying to focus on the week-by-week week thing and, and get the job done. Because we know we've... Obviously, we'll probably let ourselves down and let a lot of people down as well. So, um, yeah, we're busting our ass, mate, and we're going to do everything we can to put a performance that people can be proud of and uh, be proud of this team. Dane Coles is with us. Look, you know, you, you've played under some fantastic All Black captains and things. Tell us about Sam Kane and what you like about him, what he brings on the field, because I think this guy really cops it unfair, mate, and I've always been a big fan of his and the way that he plays, and I think he, he just seems to wear it because of who he is, and he's not his name's not Richie McCaw. Tell us how. Tell us what he brings to you. Uh, yeah, I love Sam Kane. He's probably the most resilient person I reckon I've ever met after probably what he's gone through. He just turned up... Um, just led really well. He's got his work ethic, his dedication to this team, and he's a guy that you love to follow. So, yeah, I'd I'd go to battle with Sammy Kane any day, and especially what he's been through, mate. He's um, I think he's come out even stronger, and he's a great leader of this team, and he's got everyone's respect, and everyone follows him. So, yeah, he's a good man. Well, the good thing is, I know you don't say shit like that unless you mean it, mate. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know well, how else to say it, bro. I don't I'll, know. How, you I'll know. Play a lot of footy with yeah. I played a lot of footy with Sammy, and yeah, I spe- especially what he went through and, and all the criticism he got. He's like, yeah, he just got on with it, led, talked, and tried his hardest to um, you know, get the performance. And he's been playing, you know, he's been one of our best best players, playing well. Dana, do you, I mean, do you, did you watch the Aussie? Oh, you wouldn't have watched the Aussie game beforehand, of course. But yeah, do you, I mean, you're obviously aware of all of those results in that. And here's a South African side that was so massive against us in Nels, but they just got upended by an Aussie side with all of those injuries. And how do you explain that? Yeah, I, I only seen the results, but you yeah, look like all the ah the um, highlights. Sorry, so yeah, I suppose that's just the nature of the competition at the moment. It's 
you know, if you don't front, you're going to get beaten. So, and Aussie, have, they look like they're playing a bit more attacking rugby, and a lot of they run them off their feet a little bit. So, yeah, I suppose one, we've got a big challenge coming up, but um, just make sure we worry about this week and then get on with it a little bit as well. Do you get told whether you, at what time you're coming on or anything? Because we keep seeing Aaron come off after 60 minutes. It's almost like it's preordained or something. Do you know? Nah, we don't know, mate. We just kind of get the five up, five minute um, warm up call, and um, yeah, sometimes it's slightly straight on. But yeah, that's all come down from upstairs, and we just get told. Okay, Are you enjoying that? I tell you what, your stuff on the side on is brilliant. I'm hoping that you're, you're telling your, your man, your agent, your manager, whoever it is, saying you know, Sky Sport to come and knock and mate. They're <laughs> going to be offering you a job, dude. They're going to be offering you a job. I know this. Say, hey, you're brilliant at it. <laughs> No, I think no, nah, mate. I'm, once I'm out of the game, that will be me. No way, mate! Yeah, no, um, God, don't please. Uh, Us nah. fans want you, mate. You're nah, brilliant. I'll... You're brilliant. You're so honest on I'll... the sideline. I mean, I remember that Irish test, and it was about you were saying, "Hey, look, we need to hit the rucks harder. We're not fast enough. Our line speed isn't this." Within five minutes, they'd corrected all the things you said, and we'd bloody put points on them. <laughs> yeah, no. oh, yeah. It's easy when you get the messages if I'm up top, but no, nah, mate. Once I'm done, I'll, I'll leave my conversations for my for my man cave. Okay, all right. Well, look, all the very best again. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Just go out there and play as hard, hard as hell, eh? I know you will. Yeah, cheers. You know, we will. Cheers, Martin. Appreciate it, mate.